Hello, guys, and welcome back to the College Made Easy podcast. Uh... <laughs> Off to my fantastic start, Tim. <laughs> I built up this monologue so much. I hope I'm editing this Just one. keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> Hello, guys, and welcome back to the College Made Easy podcast. Uh, before we get into it, I'd like to remind everybody to like the video before we even get started. Subscribe. We have a lot of people watching our videos who aren't subscribed. Uh, additionally, we're doing a giveaway currently. It's a $25 Amazon gift card. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway is subscribe to the channel, uh, subscribe to our TikTok page, which is uh, linked in our channel header, and then just comment down below that you followed us on TikTok. That way we know. Uh, so today we, we're gonna be interviewing our friend, Laura. Laura, do you wanna say hi? Sure, hi everyone, I'm Laura and- Do you wanna give us one fun <laughs> fact? The one fun fact. Sure. Oh boy, okay, I have to see. I have my go-to fun facts. I guess my my usual one is that I play the bass, which oh, I feel like is kind of unique. So. That's very unique. Yes. So we're going to be talking to Laura a lot about why she chose our school, why she chose her major, uh, which, by the way, is actuarial science and and comp sci. And comp sci. Yes. Oh, I Thank didn't even you, know Scott. that double major. Wait, is that even in the script? Like I don't think that's in our script. We'll yeah, talk we, about we have it. a question that says, why did you choose actuarial science? We don't even talk about computer science. We're going to talk about that, too. Scott, you all wrote right. this script. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I have question of the day. If anything could grow on trees besides money, what should grow on trees? <laughs> <laughs> it's tough because money's like the greatest thing. It is. And speaking of money, ladies and gentlemen, also, I don't have glasses because I got LASIK eye surgery, but that's beside the point. Guys, uh, speaking of money, if we head over to Teespring, we do have Tim's shirts on sale, $15.99. I am physically made of money. And now let's get back into the podcast. It is. That's a good I'm one. thinking of uh, what popped into my head was Wally, uh, where at the end, uh, the captain like gets off the ship and he's like, and we can start growing plants, uh, tree plants, and pizza plants. Because we thought the pizzas grew on trees. So, pizza. Honestly, that would be phenomenal. Yeah. Just walk outside, snip, and just, like, eat the pizza. Does it have to be food? I mean, is money food? food? Money's not food. Money's not food. So. <laughs> I could cheat the wish and or, or uh, cheat this Question. and just be, like, trees that grow money. <laughs> yeah <laughs> could grow on the tree <laughs> you want a tree that grows trees that grow money well i said you can't pick money that is i'll, I'll give it to you that's pretty creative <laughs> okay i got i got my answer uh motivational books oh my gosh to grow God, we get I, love it. <laughs> I love reading those books <laughs> I would probably go with if time could grow on trees, because if I had more time in the day, I could make more money, eat more pizza, read more motivational books, really do more time to do anything I want. That's deep. That's very deep. Okay, so I'm so happy that time came up. So fun fact, I read this this morning. The earth is spinning the fastest that it has ever spun in the past 50 years. I don't know why I didn't, I didn't really read that far. I read that headline. And uh which means that time is passing the fastest it has ever passed because time is uh well, a day is one rotation of the earth. So if a rotation is faster then it's still 24 hours, which means that seconds themselves are shorter, but it's only by like half a millisecond. So like so time is days, a construct, but our days are slightly shorter right now. Yes, but it's still 24 hours and it's still 60 minutes and it's okay. Yeah, still 60 seconds in a minute. The only place for the time to shorten is a second. So seconds themselves are shorter. Gotcha. Relative to what? Previous definitions of seconds. So does that mean then people might start living longer based on our like concept of time? Technically, yes. But the way that we say it, no. Because like a minute is defined as 60 seconds and an hour is defined as 60 minutes and so on and so forth to a year is defined as 365 days, you know? You so see, I'm struggling a, a year. What, Tim? 
I'm struggling a lot here because like so Tim. T- time is a headache, but like a second is defined no matter how fast anything's traveling. So like the use of the term second is bothering me. That being said, like like because we you could define everything based on how fast the earth spins, but then you're using like I don't know what they would call those units. But then like even if An the earth, earth rotation like if the earth is spinning faster then like again i'm not a physics major i have no idea what i'm talking about but from what i've collected on youtube (laughs) from what i have collected on youtube as i understand it if the earth is spinning faster because of relativity in like some sense like us compared to other individuals like uh, venus spins very slowly so us compared to venus we we would age faster but like we wouldn't notice any difference even like i'm not talking like scientific instruments like i don't think that we would because like relativity i don't know i'm not you're thinking way too much into this okay let's go back to talking about laura (laughs) (laughs) what the heck tim that was so deep (laughs) but like so unnecessary yeah Yeah. but i was like so con like just there, Tim, there are so times hard. when critical thinking is important, and there are times when critical thinking is not important. Tim, it's so minute that it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, no, Ben's up first. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay, Laura, so why did you choose to go to our school? So, I would say it's kind of a funny story. It's really not that funny, but... <laughs> I was completely set on I wanted to go to a large school. I didn't even consider looking at small schools. I was like, I'm going to a huge school. I know that for a fact. So I pretty much exclusively looked at large schools. And then one school specifically that I was looking at, uh, I didn't get a scholarship that I wanted. So then I started considering other schools and my mom really pushed me to come look at our school. So I went reluctantly to an accepted student's day and I fell in love and I, like within the first hour I knew I was like I'm going to go to school here so I had visited like on a tour previously and hated it and then for some reason my second visit I just really loved it and never looked back how did your uh, mom hear about it uh she actually went there oh okay. she did a uh, she didn't do her bachelor's degree there but she did a teaching certificate program okay so mm-hmm. she kind of went back to school and okay cool so during your orientation did you get to do like that legacy picture with your mom kind of thing did that count um it i was invited to it but i did not participate yeah actually i don't think many people did (laughs) no the whole legacy thing was actually part of the accepted student study that i went to though we got to go to like a vip breakfast gotcha and the breakfast was so good that it, it reeled us in, which mm. sadly, I don't think I've had a breakfast that measured enough quite to that experience. No. But I'm telling you, that accepted students' day food does not compare. It it's was yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah. So pro tip, if you go to an accepted students' day or even orientation, the food gets only downhill. It's only downhill from there. Because they're real. trying to impress you. Yes. And well, they're trying to impress the parents. Let's be clear. Yeah. Um, okay. So we all know that most people going to college have no idea what they want to do with their life. I don't expect people to know what they want to do with their life. It's usually a guessing game, but Laura, did you have any idea about like what career you wanted to go into when you were deciding to go to college? So actually, yes, I did, which I guess some people do, some people don't, like you said, but throughout high school, I knew that I had enjoyed math. So I had started to narrow down to something in that direction. And one of my teachers had suggested that I look into actuarial science. So I did. And then that kind of prompted me to apply to schools that did have actuarial science programs. But then I also was looking at schools just to study math. And I guess that's another reason why I did end up picking our school is because of the actuarial science program which not every school has. So I did go in knowing that I enjoyed math, but I also, I wasn't totally sure about what the actuarial field really entailed necessarily. I knew it was math, kind of business, usually insurance, 
but beyond that it was kind of a mystery <laughs> and so I did go in knowing that I wanted to pursue the actuarial field that's like the complete opposite of me I literally didn't know about actuarial science till like a third of the way through junior year <laughs> and then landed on it <laughs> You landed eventually, right? That's what matters. Yeah. yeah. I don't think many people even know what it is to this day. If you were to ask I heard them. about it in high school, actually, but I was like, hmm, weird word. Never mind. Sometimes I don't even think I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's risk, risk management. Just say that. Scott, literally, Scott literally has a job and he's only kind. He, well, Scott has a job. He's starting the job soon. He's only like kind of sure what he's doing. Oh, I don't even know what I'm doing yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so here's the thing: like within the insurance industry, there's like so many different areas or, or types of work you could do, like inside of actuarial science programs at insurance companies. So, what one actuary does is completely different uh, compared to another actuary. Some work like on stuff related like to accounting. Others are doing econ. Some are like really focused on finance. It's like it's a blend. I'm so not it's, doing the finance thing. Uh uh. Nope. It's fascinating though, like the three of you all picked a major that even though there are options in the field, like you're all when you're done going to be actuaries versus like economics. When I think about it as a major, like people take it literally every direction. And that's like part of why I chose it because it just leaves so many paths open, but it's interesting that you guys picked a major that really kind of narrows your field. And there's a lot of like luxury that comes with that. Like Scott was able to like predict like what the next step is and like actuaries it's, you all know like what your next exam is. Mm. And there's just like that single like linear path, which has its benefits See, I think it's interesting that you mentioned that because that's exactly why I picked it. I like the idea of a directed path and the idea of having so many options kind of scared me. <laughs> so I was like, I liked the idea of knowing what my path looked like and what I would be doing. Honestly, I think it's really funny when uh, people ask me what my major is and I say actuarial science. And they then the next question, of course, is, oh, well, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to be? I was like, an actuary <laughs> whereas with other people like if you majored in economics it's you're not necessarily going to say an economist like, yeah it could be anything i mean economists like people who are economists are college professors and like the top of the federal reserve like nobody else goes i'm an economist yeah even if they have an economics degree and do economics work all day mm -hmm. yeah um but yeah so i guess you you kind of answered why you chose actuarial science for that straight path uh but would you tell us more about why you chose computer science that second major so that was something that i kind of happened upon once i started school so one of the requirements for the actuarial science major at our school is to take the an introduction to computer science class so I was put in that first semester freshman year and I had really pre no previous exposure to computer science, not my high school didn't have anything with it. I barely even knew what it was. So I wasn't really interested in it or it, and it wasn't anything that I had been looking for. So I get to the class and we go through the semester. I'm enjoying it and I figure, okay, once the semester ends, why don't I take the next class in the series? So I did, I enjoyed that one too. And then I said, well, I guess I might as well take the next one too. <laughs> so I started, just kept taking classes. And then one day I kind of stopped to think about it. And I was like, wow, I really enjoy this. Like, this is something that I could potentially pursue. And even if I don't, I think it pairs very well with the actuarial science. And there is some overlap. So I decided to pursue it as, first I was thinking a minor, but then I decided on a second major. And I'm very happy that I did. I feel like I have a wealth of knowledge that just enhances my actuarial skills and definitely has given me an edge in internships in the workplace and just the knowledge that I've gained from it. So it's not something I don't think that I would pursue like individually, like to go be a software developer or something, but I do enjoy it. I just realized every single person on this podcast that is an actuarial science major 
is a double major. Yep. People yeah, I was just thinking about that. Yeah. Like, actuarial science is a great field. And, but like, what Scott was talking about, how he has like no idea because there's so many different things. Well, and Tim, like, there are literally so many different ways to go in actuarial science and we'll all still be actuaries. So, literally, being a double major in actuarial science and econ or math or computer science or finance. You can literally double major in so many different things as long as one of them is actuarial science. And it's just still, you're, you're an actuary, but like you have this second major that is mildly unrelated, but it's so useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Laura, I think you can attest to this, that having that double major uh, helps you stand out compared to other um, actuarial science students from other schools applying to internships who are strictly just actuarial science. Absolutely. I mean, I would say, oh, wow, over a year ago now, I guess, when I was interviewing for different internships, that was something that was brought up in almost every single interview. And well, obviously, I brought it up because it's part of my like educational background. But it was something that was discussed and that the interviewer was always very intrigued by. And it's definitely not something that everybody has. And computer science, for sure. Uh, Scott and I have talked about this before. Actuarial science, often in like data about majors and about jobs, isn't really accounted for fairly. Like Scott and I have seen data where actuaries and accountants are put together. Oh, that was a load of garbage. But (laughs) like computer science in particular, as a second major, uh, something one of our professors talks a ton about, uh, Scott, if you know who Scott is. Um, not this Scott, but not me. My Scott, Scott, my current oh, Scott. Scott. No, um, not. Oh, that one. oh, oh. Okay. The, yeah. The, this yes. professor, though, he talks about like econ and computer science for years was like the best double major. I'm not sure how that compares to actuarial mm-hmm. science and computer science, but like with those two majors, you were making more than engineers as a starting salary, just because having computer science, like it's the future, knowing how to code and everything. Definitely. I would have to agree. I've heard that with almost everything these days, like knowing how to code will give you an edge and maybe not with like an English degree, but it's like any like remotely technical field, I would say you can't go wrong with learning how to code. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you're major, if you're in a business school or a school of science, yeah, no, any kind of code, I guess. Well, if you're like a, statistician no r if you're a school of science like physics or astronomy or anything like that no python that's all i got at the moment or if your business sql i guess is that scott you know more well i haven't used sql oh okay never mind ignore that one see i think that's funny because i use it at my internship probably daily really oh yes and even i mean i came in with prior knowledge but even the people who didn't use it previously had to learn how to use it and it's job critical so to speak for me so I think it's interesting that you didn't have the same experience actuaries are so diverse it's crazy yeah literally I went to like an actuary uh I don't even know what it was it was the thing for your job <laughs> but the, one of the actuaries was like it was a conference let's call it a conference one of the actuaries was t- talking about like things that you could know to get ahead in the actuary field and he listed off like seven different coding languages and then one of his work co-workers came in to clarify he was like you don't need to know all of these things just know any of them and you'll be doing well <laughs> for whatever field by the way, Tesla is looking for actuaries right now, right? They're looking for FSAs. Oh, well, I'm not quite there yet. Or Laura. That, none of us are. No. That's like, <laughs> we're eight exams away from that. <laughs> I don't know. I, they might be willing to hire like that. They, they're desperate on earnings calls. They've been asking for actuaries. You don't hire people on earnings calls. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> on earnings calls, they're begging for actuaries guys <laughs> anyway um so laura what motivates you to do so well in school 
That is a loaded question. It's a good um, question though. Oh, Scott, guess, you came up with it. <laughs> because the first thing that pops into my mind is fear of failure, but. <laughs> um, <At> Scott. <laughs> so I definitely, I have a fear of failure, but also I like taking ownership of my own work. So the idea that like, if I do poorly, that is really only for the most part a reflection of me and I don't like thinking about that so the idea again it all kind of circles back to the fear of failure but I want to put my best work forward into the world so that is kind of why I want to do well I think that kind of goes along with most of our reasonings did did you ever have like a big failure in college that maybe sparked you to work harder because I I talked about this on the podcast and how I failed a religion exam and I like really needed to work hard in that class to like maintain a good grade. I'm curious if you had an experience like that. It's not, I mean, there's one isolated experience that's coming to mind, but it was sort of the culmination of a difficult semester. So it was the fall of my sophomore year and I was taking one or two computer science classes and two math classes and they all had labs and they were very challenging to me. And it was kind of the first time that like college had just hit me like a ton of bricks. Whereas in the past, I mean, I was successful in high school and going in like freshman year, yes, it was more difficult, but it wasn't impossible. But this semester I had just not chosen my classes in a wise way. And I had had an exam one night and I didn't know some of the answers and I was really struggling. And like three hours later, I started to cry. I turned in my exam and I was walking out of the building and then I just called my mom and I was sobbing and I was like, I can't do this. I, I don't want to be in college anymore. <laughs> and it was just kind of a rock bottom moment for me. But since then, we've only gone up. <laughs> so obviously, I didn't drop out. I'm doing much better than I was then. But it's just like, it kind of, things kind of got the best of me. Mm. But after that, I made it a priority to do well, organize myself and try to not experience that feeling again. And more or less, I was successful. I definitely haven't uh, been feeling that way in a long time. Mm -hmm. Good. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure we've all had those moments where like you're taking an exam and you don't know a lot of the, it's, it, you start to panic. You Honestly, can, can we pause for a moment, though? Like, that fall of sophomore year, that's, like, no one's favorite semester. Oh, that's like, no. That's, like, no. actually a bad semester for most people. Because- oh, Tim, was that the semester that I'm thinking of for you? No, I don't think so. But, like, in okay. general, that, that fall, fall of sophomore year. Was that during Talk 3? Yeah. Yeah. That. oh yeah Ooh. that wasn't the exam i'm thinking it was discrete was the exam that i was leaving but it was like calc 3 discrete data structures for computer science and then some other class that i was in guys i have to figure out how bad i bombed the calc 3 final because i went from an a to from an a in the class to a b on the final <laughs> i actually had a similar experience <laughs> i got a d on the final never gotten a d before in my life but i Wow. I never no, I asked him like he said you could like email him if you were curious what grade you got but like I kind of didn't want to know at that point Laura, I might email him for you be like listen he's my roommate we want to know Laura I'm pretty sure on that calc 3 final I got a d2 and I'm pretty sure that like translated to an a or he means or, like on a normal you. grading scale, he got what would have been a D, but since it was Calc 3, he got an A. Like the curve? Oh, I I think I got a D, like a DD after the curve. Yeah. Oh, oh. Like, yeah, as in like Scott. I think I had a maybe got a B minus or a B in the class, but to get an A, I only needed to get like a B minus on the final, and then I did not do that. And yeah, yeah. the only yeah. D I've ever gotten. All I remember was like, he was like, if you don't show up to the final, you still have a C plus. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've had a math professor email me the same thing, but it wasn't C plus when he said it. <laughs> D minus. 
<laughs> the worst Fantastic. part was I walked out of that exam feeling thing. confident. And I was like, wow, I knew how to answer like all of those questions. And then Don't you hate that? Apparently I did not. Just like being so confident on a test and just like, yeah, no, you're bad at this. <laughs> like, thanks. Yeah, I didn't think the Calc 3 final was like like I got a, I got a ton of points off too, but I don't remember like not knowing how to do anything on that. No. You know what I mean? I didn't think any one question was like insanely difficult or I didn't know how to do it. Right. I mean, I got an A uh, on the you... final, but to clarify, it was during last spring. It was during the quarantine semester. So take what you will. <laughs> if you guys remember being able to remember being able to do things on that final. Would you mind doing a line integral for me right now? Either Can of you, you? just integrate and evaluate. Okay, yeah, so just do it. I was good at line integrals. That was my favorite part of the class. What about a surface integral? Those are my Again, you just do it. Surface. If it's an integral, it's Tim, it's just over a different range. If you set it up for me, I can do it. It's an integral. Okay, so set it up. There you go. Now I can't do it. <laughs> All right. So you remember doing stuff, apparently. <laughs> um so laura i feel like we do that with every interview we're like so. i know <laughs> i think every person we've interviewed has taken count three. <laughs> oh, wait. So, requirement to be interviewed yeah so laura you play rugby i do so let's just just tell us about your overall rugby experience and like why you got into it so it is kind of a bit obscure i guess not a lot of people play and especially not a lot of girls So I did not play in high school. I had never um, had any experience with it, but I had always played team sports and enjoyed the aspect of being on a team. I was never really that great at them, but I just enjoyed being there and I was happy to participate. So coming to college, I didn't really know what I would start doing. So I went freshman year to our club fair and kind of was taking it all in. It was very overwhelming. And I was cornered by the table that had the women's rugby team. And they started talking to me and they're like, oh, you should play. Like, you look like you'd be good at it. And I had in the back of my mind, maybe considered joining the team. And it did sound interesting, but I don't think it, I would have walked up to them myself. So they invited me to come to a practice and just see what it was all about. And from the first day, I just fell in love. And the sport is super fun. And just even more so the people. I've made so many great friends being on the team. And... I can't imagine my college experience without it. I had a similar experience with Ultimate Frisbee at the club fair. <laughs> they really <laughs> know how to corner you. you. <laughs> they do. Yeah. I mean, they offered to like literally throw the disc with me at the club fair. So like that was pretty easy for them to get me in. So <laughs> that's one of our tactics too, is we throw the ball at people walking by. Oh, okay. For anybody who doesn't know, a disc is called a Frisbee. You know, the uh, United States, uh, like, professional league is called the AUDL, the American Ultimate Disc League. It's a Frisbee. It's a disc. <laughs> it is a regulation-sized disc that we use. Ben really likes calling it a disc. It makes him sound like a true Ultimate. If it's player. not the regulation size and weight, then it's Frisbee. Um. But Laura, you also really enjoy weightlifting, correct? This is true. I do. So and... go ahead. Fun you... fact, she's stronger than Scott. <laughs> Laura probably is stronger than me. Um, Maybe not right now. <laughs> so how did you get into it? And then like, why, like, was it a big motivator in your life? Like, did it relieve stress for you, anxiety, stuff like that? Sure. So I started, I kind of got into lifting when I was in high school. I joined a CrossFit gym in my town and because one of my friends worked out there and I was looking for something different, like to exercise in like the off season of sports, kind of get stronger. So it seemed like a good option. So I started working out there and that's how I really started getting into lifting. And even though and then I did that all through high school and then coming to college, I didn't keep going to a CrossFit gym, but I continued to lift in the school gym and with the rugby team. And it's just always something that I've really enjoyed. It makes me feel good, relieve stress. And overall, it's just something that I value a lot. So I do try to make time for it, even though 
sometimes life, especially in college, gets a little crazy. Yeah. Are you like a 7 a.m. workout person or are you like a 7 p.m. workout person? You will never see me at the gym before 10 a.m. in my (laughs) life. You're lucky if you see me out of bed by 10 a.m. So that's (laughs) definitely more of an afternoon workout into the evening kind of person. I'm out of the gym by 10 (laughs) a.m. Cool. No. So, So exercise versus sleep, what do you value more? Sleep. Sleep. As much as I would like to say that it's not, that's not the case. It, I know myself, if I try to say I'm going to go work out in the morning, I never do. <laughs> I'm still shocked from doing this podcast. Like everybody we've had on, like says that they work out exercise and all of our regular people exercise slash workout. Except, except for him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good. Like a lot of people get a lot of motivation out of it and like, relieving stress i don't know i just think it's interesting like i didn't realize how many people really do work out really do exercise Mm. regularly well tim you have to realize that it's like it's a form of stress relief for a lot of people and it helps them focus um but like for you i'm sure you do other stuff that has the same outcome yeah yeah like uh the stock market (laughs) stock market oh i am stressed today bitcoin and my cryptos i just poured tons of money in there like down 25 percent today oh i sold this uh, morning i've lost fifteen hundred dollars today life is good (laughs) (laughs) but uh yeah no i i think it is interesting and like people really should give exercising and working out at the gym a fair shot i did i didn't like it I don't know, give it a week or two at least. I think you got to give it a fair shot, not just a day. Something I would add to that too is you definitely have to find what you enjoy for exercise because it's definitely not the same for everyone. Like I really enjoy lifting, but that's pretty much it. I don't, I know some people love to run. It makes them feel good. It makes me feel like I want to (laughs) die. So I don't do it because I don't enjoy it. And if it causes me more stress, I just like, yes, it is healthy, but you just, you need to find what works for you. And for me, that's not it. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. I used to run, I did cross country and track in high school. And uh, when I started going to the planet fitness nearby my house, I uh, would end every workout was just like a one mile run. I did that for like two weeks and was like, you know what? I've evolved. No more running, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) Yeah. I try to stick to running strictly in the summer because I don't want to run in the freezing cold. It's just, it's just not fun. I mm. love running when it's like 65 degrees and a slight rain because like you get pretty hot running and it's very nice to be cooled down with the rain. Mm-hmm. I agree. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So Laura, what motivates you to wake up each morning at 10 a.m.? I threw in the 10 a.m. because we we found out about that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that um, was in the script already for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Except if I have to work, and then I will wake up before 10 a.m. But on my ideal day, 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. would be my wake up time. So I think it's definitely I have always find something to look forward to in every day, and I'm definitely a big believer in enjoying the little things in life. So whether it's looking forward to a cup of coffee in the morning or knowing that I'll get to listen to my favorite song that day. So like even like little things like creating happiness for yourself, I feel like Mm -hmm. is really important. So I definitely try to go into each day, look like waking up and knowing that I have something to look forward to. So I think that's kind of what gets me up is knowing that I'll have some kind of enjoyment ahead of me. Uh, On the coffee note, can I ask Duncan or Starbucks? Duncan. I'll, I'll throw in, I like Tim Hortons better, but it is not in my area. Not mine either. I've never been. Heard of it, but never been. Tim Hortons is phenomenal. I because it has your name in it. <laughs> I know, really. No, no, no. Show them the mug. more than that. Show them the mug. Show them the mug. It's, I don't we have know it it's on your desk. I've got like on. butterflies and it. A tree. <laughs> no, they're birds. There's like a tree. <laughs> I thought they were butterflies all this time. I've never looked at this mug closely. <laughs> So is it Tim Hortons in the dishwasher then? Yeah, I think so. The one day of the week that he doesn't have it. <laughs> okay, so Laura, like Tim and I 
and, and Zach too would like are big coffee drinkers. Yes. So in your townhouse, did you make coffee every day? Yes. So, but we, I don't know if you're referring to like make a pot of coffee. Yeah. But pot. we have a Keurig, so mm. <laughs> I make coffee for myself. But, <laughs> and prior to this though, I guess I've only had two roommates prior to living in a townhouse with five other people, but no one else had been a coffee drinker. If anything, they were against it. But now the coffee drinkers are in the majority. So it is Mm. very nice. So usually at least at some point throughout the day, someone is going out to buy a coffee somewhere, drink coffee. So it's, there's no lack of coffee running through our house. These guys may... The, the tavern is considering opening up a morning barista. <laughs> <laughs> These guys made like a 12 cup coffee thing, like a pot just every morning. It's six cups. Whatever. It looked like 12 to a nine coffee drinker. <laughs> but no, it gets your, it gets your day going. It gets you something, gets you to um, get you excited about doing something. You know what else gets you excited about doing something? You know what else gets your day going? The gym. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> like I genuinely enjoy it. I mean, I work from home, but like starting up my computer, sitting at my desk, got my hot cup of coffee next to me. Yeah. Life is good. I mm-hmm. just, I'm feeling good in that moment. Life is good. Until I start thinking but, about all the work that I have to do. And <laughs> but it could be less better. Good, but it could but be better. For that, those few moments. So... <laughs> Laura, Laura, have you seen Wonder Woman yet? 1984? Oh, I have not. Oh. There's a scene in the movie that there's like a lot of memes have come out of this where uh, Pedro Pascal, he's a character, I don't know who, I haven't seen it either, but I've seen the memes. At one point, he's like, life is good, but it can be better. <laughs> Basically, uh, he is, he's an investor in, he owns an oil company and he's trying to get investors to invest in the oil company. And he's okay. like, life is good, but it could be better if you invest. <laughs> hmm. But, yeah, life is good, but right. it could be better. Anyway, so enough movies aside. <laughs> Unless your funny experience involves a movie. Anyway, so no. can you tell us about a very funny experience that you've had on campus or just like a really funny failure, something like that? Sure. I, I've i been thinking about this one, but it struck me while I was laying in bed last night. And I don't know how I forgot about it. Maybe because I've tried to block it out. But it's more embarrassing, but... It's pretty funny. So my sophomore year, I worked as a lab assistant in a computer science class. So I would be there with the professor and the students would be working on their assignment for the day. And just if they had some questions, I would help answer them and just kind of assist the professor since she was only one person makes it's more helpful to have moves things along to have two people. Mm. So it was winding down the semester. It was in the spring. And I think maybe we only had one or two weeks of school left. And someone raised their hand. So I walked over to them. I was talking to the boy and he um, had asked. And so I leaned over to look at his computer and I was chewing gum and it fell out of my mouth into his lap. <laughs> and I didn't know. I like, panicked and I wasn't going to just reach down and grab it because it was right in his lap and that would not be that would be frowned upon so I just didn't know what to do I grabbed tissue gave it to him and threw it away I didn't answer his question I just walked away (laughs) and I was so embarrassed and leaving that day I told I was like I have to transfer I can't show my face there again that is so funny honestly I think we should ask this question to every single guest because that was fantastic (laughs) well I'm glad now it's on the internet and everyone yes yep but like now that it's on the internet don't you feel better yeah i do see i think it's funny now i can laugh about it you shared it on your own terms i did i just had a great idea we should literally have an episode and call it like uh college student confessions or something like that but not exactly like that because that has some weird connotations but like just literally just talk about like the all of our failures just like the weirdest things that we've ever done by accident and those kinds of things that'd be great Another slight follow-up to that is a class that I was taking this past semester. We were assigned different partners, and one time, that same guy was my partner. And I don't think I said two words Did you offer him a piece of gum? I did not, and I was sure not to chew gum while I was sitting next to him. 
<laughs> you so should have offered him gum. That honestly, it takes away all of the awkwardness. <laughs> There's a slight issue. I'm pretty sure it was him, but there were several guys in that class in the lab that I TA'd for that looked similar. So mm. I can never be sure, but I'm pretty sure it was him. Okay. Are we on to the lightning round now? Wait, wait before we get to the lightning <laughs> round, fun fact, Tim... Oh, Zach, you want me to tell the story? Tim, Zach, and Laura actually worked on a project... Not a project, on a lab <laughs> together. Oh. Yeah. Laura can so, tell her side of the story, and Tim can tell his side. <laughs> Laura, do you want to go first, or I can go first? Sure. So it was a class, and we were all online, and we had an assignment to do. So we were put into breakout rooms on Zoom. And everyone had their cameras off and no one was speaking. And someone had to type on the document and it ended up being me, which whatever, it's fine. But I have been familiar more so with Tim and then Zach as well. But Tim had no idea who I was and he didn't like give any acknowledgement or anything. No, wait, wait. (laughs) okay, I want to jump in. Okay. Okay. So we had celebrated a 21st birthday party the <laughs> night before. Um, so this was a Friday class. It happened to be my only Friday class, but it was a morning class. And so Zach had also celebrated. Zach and I had both celebrated this 21st birthday party. Apparently, we had celebrated a little bit too much. Zach and I were both not feeling well that morning. <laughs> Now, Laura, I like I knew who you were, but I had never like heard your heard or read your last name before. And I didn't realize like because this class was divided into two halves. So I had never even seen you in the class because you were in the other half. That's fair. So I had no idea that I actually knew you, but like it was like awful on my part because like I did totally intend to get somebody else to do this lab for me. <laughs> but I had, no, was me. <laughs> I had no idea that it was you. Like, if I had known, I wouldn't have. But, like, I didn't recognize your last name. It's okay. It worked out. I How mean, did you guys, like, find We got out? an A on the lab, I think. We did. I think m- my favorite part was that um, <laughs> Zach would occasionally turn his mic on and grunt. <laughs> turn it off. It sounded like he was in a lot of pain. I was concerned. I think he was. It, From what I hear now, I would have to agree. I was in bed at this time because, like, I live with Zach, and I remember hearing Laura's voice on Zach's Zoom call. And then afterwards, I go, "Oh, you're working with Laura," and he goes, "Who's Laura?" <laughs> 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 no zach and i were like texting i was like zach don't worry i got this laura's doing it but again i had no <laughs> idea that it was you laura <laughs> i'm laura it was how did you find so, out I think laura scott. my apologies <laughs> scott told me yeah that's funny because i think i told scott about it and then because i knew i was completely clear on the situation i knew who everybody was and then <laughs> I just, I wasn't familiar with the last name. And that's why, like, I think we might have even talked about uh, being in that same class. But again, since the class was in, like, the two halves. I think that was after the uh, first exam. So we definitely talked about it. Yeah. But I don't know. Do, it happens. My bad. I wasn't thinking straight that morning. <laughs> that's <laughs> so okay. That At least morning. I was. <laughs> that morning was special <laughs> no special really? enough whatever what i don't know <laughs> okay so for the lightning round um usually we'll do a timer but it's only 14 so we can just have you answer everyone yeah okay. we've gotten pretty lazy with the whole timer thing i don't think we're doing that anymore anyway <laughs> so we'll go uh ben me tim and we'll just go from there so again, the idea is still just answer as quick as possible. So mm-hmm. like first thing that comes into my mind, just. Yep. Yeah. We're that. not doing word association particularly, but I guess, <laughs> I mean, for some of them, it could count. <laughs> um, so we re- are we ready? It's a hot dog, a sandwich, pizza. <laughs> what? <laughs> word association. <laughs> oh, we're not. Well, I was like, is that a question on you? First. <laughs> okay. All right. We're getting started. Ready? Set. What was the best year of your life? Age or year? Year. 
Um, I guess when I was 19. Okay. Oh. Uh, Marvel or DC? Marvel? If Voldemort offered you a hug, would you accept? No. Pandas or penguins? Penguins. Uh, what's your favorite carb? Like bread, rice, pasta, etc. Bagels. Nice. Oh, good answer. I feel like I know this one. Coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> what chore do you hate doing the most? Washing dishes. Yeah. Is cereal soup? No. Who has more money, Bruce Wayne or Tony Stark? Bruce Wayne? Know. I don't know. Do you know who those people are? I, I roughly. Okay. Yes. That's fine. Bruce Wayne is it's wrong, but we'll keep going. Fine. <laughs> what is your favorite conspiracy theory? <laughs> Ooh. Bruce Wayne has more money than Tony Stark. Um, <laughs> there are so many. Um I'm really into like Princess Diana and like her death, or maybe she faked her death. I don't know. There are so many ways you can go with it. I'm into that. Okay. Um, do you consider Princess Leia a Disney princess? No. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Sure. What app do you use the most? Probably TikTok. Oh, <laughs> that's everyone's answer now. <laughs> Scott. Oh, sorry. I saw you typing something. Um, no, no, it's oh, oh, what's the greatest movie of all time? Legally Blonde. Nice. What's well, funnier than 24? 25. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so glad you got the answer to the last one. That was it. <laughs> I realized that, like, every that Tim, Scott and I were doing uh, one more than Tim. So I was like, you know what? Make it even, throw it in there. <laughs> I love it. That's a great way to end it. Thank you. All right. Well, that's so all we got. <laughs> thank you, Laura, for coming on for this interview. I think it thank was so much. interesting, pretty entertaining. Um, I'm sorry again for making you do my lab, but thank you for the A. Um, it's okay. My pleasure. <laughs> uh, so once again, we're doing that $25 Amazon gift card giveaway. So all you have to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, follow us on TikTok, and then comment down below that you followed us. Uh, we'll be giving that away in the next week or so, Scott. Yeah, it's when we get enough submissions, basically, so we can actually like do a good, uh, like give everyone a good chance. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so also notice our subscriber count's pretty low, so you stand a pretty good chance of winning. Um, don't forget to like the video, follow us if you're on YouTube, or no, follow us on the audio version, subscribe on YouTube. I got this. I'm a professional. <laughs> All right. See you guys on the next one. And check out the merch below. Yeah, buy my shirt. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> Physically made of money. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs>